Hi, and welcome back. So a new study out of Harvard University has shown that if you double the government's exercise recommendations, you can actually reduce all-cause mortality by 31%. Enough while filling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see how we can do it. This is a review of a study that was penned by David Neald, where he looks into a study out of the Harvard T. Chan School of Public Health at Harvard University, which looked at 116,000 people over the course of 30 years and what level of physical activity over the course of a week would yield the most favorable outcome when it came to the risk of death from all-cause mortality. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. An extensive study involving records from more than 116,000 people over the course of 30 years has found that moderate amounts of physical activity for between 300 minutes, that's five hours, and 600 minutes, which is 10 hours, could be the weekly sweet spot when it comes to reducing mortality risk. And if you make those workouts a little more intense, you can tap out between 150 minutes, which is two and a half hours, or 300 minutes, which again is five hours, and that's per week. While being satisfied, your body will likely reap the same rewards. We are all going to die. Of course, that is a given. But the question is, when will it happen? According to this new research, the broad 150 to 600 minute window brings the most benefits in terms of extending lifespans and reducing the risk of dying from causes other than old age. This new research looked at problems associated with the cardiovascular system in particular and suggested that while over exercising isn't a problem in terms of heart health, it also doesn't do much in terms of reducing the risk of an early death. Dong Hoon Lee, a research associate and nutritionist at Harvard University said, the potential impact of physical activity on health is great, yet it remains unclear whether engaging in high levels of prolonged, vigorous or moderate intensity physical activity above the recommended levels provides any additional benefits or harmful effects on cardiovascular health. At present, the US Department of Health and Human Services recommends either 150 to 300 minutes of moderate physical activity a week, so walking, calisthenics, slow cycling on the flat, mowing the lawn, etc., or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous physical activity a week. This includes things such as swimming, running, high intensity interval training, and fast cycling up hills, etc. The participants in the study who followed those guidelines had a 20 to 21% for moderate activity or a 19% for vigorous activity, lower risk of mortality from all causes. However, for those who went up to 600 minutes of moderate activity per week, the risk fell even further, a total drop of between 26 and 31%. So the question is, can you fit into your weekly exercise regime 10 hours of moderate exercise? Activities such as brisk walking, water aerobics, riding a bike on level ground or with a few hills, playing doubles tennis to potentially reduce your risk of dying from all causes by up to 31%. That's around one hour, 25 minutes a day, seven days a week. Among other findings from the study, the researchers noted that both moderate and vigorous activity in line with the current government guidelines lowered the risk of cardiovascular disease to between 22 and 25% for moderate activity and up to 31% for vigorous activity. In some cases, pushing past the guidelines reduced the risk even more. Dong Hoon Lee noted that our findings support the current national physical activity guidelines and further suggest that the maximum benefits may be achieved by performing medium to high levels of either moderate or vigorous activity or a combination. Previous studies have suggested, and there's a link in the description below, that there's a risk of overdoing it. These studies show an increased risk of artery hardening in old age among those who do at least three times as much exercise as is recommended. That said, this study found no health risks associated with 
excess activity. The researchers also didn't see any additional benefits. In other words, lots of exercise wasn't appearing to cause any damage, but it might not be doing much good either, at least based on this particular study. Talking about the cohort, it's worth noting that 93% of the study participants were Caucasian, and so not indicative of the population overall. The researchers said that even with this large sample size, they need to do further research in order to get a better overall picture. At present, it seems like 150 to 600 minutes exercise, that's between two and a half hours and 10 hours a week, is well worth aiming for if you want to maintain your health and your fitness. Dong Hoon Lee of Harvard University closed by saying, our study provides evidence to guide individuals to choose the right amount and intensity of physical activity over their lifetime to maintain their overall health. If you watch the channel for any length of time, you will know I've reviewed numerous studies looking into the optimal length of time and the intensity of exercise required to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. The goal of reducing your all-cause mortality by up to 31% is, in my humble opinion, a fantastic goal to have. But as I mentioned earlier, that's around 1 hour 25 minutes a day for a full 7 days a week. Let me know if you currently do this amount of exercise or if you believe that for the average person who has a real job and a family to take care of, this target is well and truly out of reach. You may remember that in August of this year, I posted a video that reviewed a study looking into the effects of all-cause mortality and the feasibility of conducting all the government recommended exercise requirements over a few days, possibly at the weekend. This study looked at 350,000 people, considerably more than the 116,000 of this study. Researchers from the Federal University of Sao Paulo in Brazil compared people who undertook the US government's recommended level of moderate to vigorous physical activity each week, and they found very little difference between those who trained at the weekend and the participants who exercise more regularly in terms of reduced mortality risk from all causes and specifically from cancer and cardiovascular disease. I think it's going to be difficult to compare these two studies to see how the exercise at the weekend study hazard ratios for all cause mortality that was 0.92 for weekend exercisers and 0.85 for regular activity participants match up against the 600 minutes of moderate activity per week where the risk fell between 26 and 31 percent. There appears to be a conflict here, but I don't think anyone could fit 600 minutes, that's 10 hours of quality exercise, into every weekend. So if you want to aim for a 31% drop in the risk of all-cause mortality, unfortunately, you may not be able to do all of this exercise just at the weekend. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative. So it appears here from this study that more is better. But to be honest, I don't think that that more is achievable for every person. Uh, unless you're a personal trainer, so you're in the gym all the time, or you're retired, I can't see anyone who has a normal job and has to look after a family being able to find an extra one hour, 25 minutes a day, every day, seven days a week to hit these targets. Personally, after a, a CrossFit workout, not even a hard one, but a moderately hard one, I'm exhausted and I probably can't train the next day to the same intensity. A normal CrossFit workout lasts between 40, 50, maybe 60 minutes. So that day, I would still have to go and do another 30 minutes after completing a 50 to 60 minute CrossFit workout just to hit this target and then do it the next day and the day after that and not take a day off all week. I know that physically I wouldn't be able to do that. I would definitely injure myself or I would be so exhausted after maybe four or five days, I would need to take two or three days off. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this particular presentation. I look forward to seeing your comments with regard to hitting this 10 hours a week exercise and moderate or physical activity. Um, as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.